beginning in the 1800s. Uh, Kathleen Bates popularized Mrs. Claus in Goody Santa Claus on a Single Lane. Is There a Santa Claus was the title, you know, a 19, 1897 version of New York Sun. Um, basically hanging up the stockings for Santa Claus, Ohio. In a Frank L. Baum, isn't that a good one? Anybody remember Somewhere Over the Rainbow? He wrote a Christmas, he wrote a thing. Oh. He popularized Santa Claus myths were not set in stone at the time, leaving Baum to give his um, Nick Claus, Nicholas, 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 Nicholas. That uh, means uh, a wide variety of immortal support, a home in the Laughing Valley of Ho. Ho, ho, ha, ho, and ten reindeer who Ho, fly. ha, ho, that's like ho, 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 right? The Laughing Valley, ho, but, ho, uh, ho. His immortality was earned, decided by a vote of those naturally immortal. Okay, watch the Christmas specials and you'll see Santa Claus is dying from age. And the immortals, the, the, all of these immortals gather around him in one of the cartoons. And they oh, decide. I saw that he was like tired and then they got to go he, home Santa Claus. Yeah, and they, um, and they grab him. Um, oh, actually, I think Ed. Um, they had to do it last Christmas. I think Ed, you know, um, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, Mr. Uh, Lou Grant. He played that character in the television movie of the same thing, but it was a cartoon first. But all of these old figures are standing around the dying Santa Claus, and they've decided that the you know the world can lose a lot of things, but they can't lose the one person that truly loves children. So they granted him the gift of immortality. That was from that, that cartoon. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Isn't that something? So that, now you understand some of these things. I yeah. know. Uh, basically, um, Janet Cross strives to find a way to bring joy to the lives of children, eventually invents toys as a principal means. Uh, basically, the Coca-Cola Christmas advertising started in 1930. Today, Coca-Cola. Oh, really? They Coca did that same one with the old Santa Claus. Yeah, the old Santa Claus and the um, and the and a polar bear now. Mm -hmm. Polar bear. You know, every Christmas they bring the polar bear out to basically, you know, wiggle the kids wiggle their butts and Santa Claus looks with disdain upon the young polar bear. So. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. okay um, and of it, course, he's in red and white because. Do you think of Santa Claus in red and white because those are the colors of Coca-Cola? Yeah, but uh, Red Rock, um, uh, Coca-Cola is not the first company. White Rock Beverages had used the red and white Santa to sell mineral water earlier and then an advertiser's first ginger ale. In fact, uh, basically Santa Clauses have already appeared in red and white on the cover of Puck magazine at the start of the century. I actually remember that. Oh, really? You do? Uh, yeah, well, you I, I remember it. Puck Magazine. Puck Mag. Okay, I'm old, folks. I mean... He was a... not alive at the turn of the century. No. Not, not like the 19th No, I, I did not know Abraham Lincoln like Ronald Reagan did. So, but my... Did he? My grandmother met Ronald. Met, uh, met Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Yep. Okay. Okay, um, uh, basically, an image of Santa Claus, but that character became reinforced in association with charity and philanthropy, specialized organizations such as Salvation Army volunteers dressed as Santa Claus typically became part of the fundraising drive to aid. We actually saw a, a Santa Claus the other day in front of Target. He's singing and dancing and he's just shaking himself up with music. You know, he was really having a good time out there. So, but that's how, when I was growing up, um, Go look at uh, Robin and the Seven Hoods with Bing Crosby, yeah. and um, you're going to see Santa Claus as it used to be, or a miracle on 30... Uh, yeah, no, but no. I used to see, okay, Salvation Army, the, the people are dressed up, yeah. they don't look very jolly, they're going... No, but, the, in, <laughs> but, no, but she, she's from a different period. When I was, though, all of them dressed up, you know, Salvation Army, they always dressed They weren't paid volunteers then, they, I mean, they were, they were total volunteers, they weren't paid like they are today. They would be set out there and ring, 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 ring in their Santa Claus outfits. And what happened was the Santa Claus spread across the, war, the country. It spread in areas that were got awful warm at this time of year. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you put a guy in a fur outfit, you know, that outfit out there. Although the Mrs. Claus and the little mini outfits like this are still very popular. You'll get to see a lot of this type of outfit. But you don't see them like that on the cartoons. This is more for no. adult costumes. Yeah, uh, in, right. 
Basically, in some marriages from the 20th century, Santa as a person making his toys by hand in a small workshop like Craftsman. Eventually, the idea emerged that he had numerous selves responsible for making the toys. Because remember, we're going to go back to what we may have said before. Uh, Santa Claus, uh, our Kris Kringle, mm -hmm. you know, according to the legend, was left he, uh, left in a forest. We're going to go back to the uh, the he version. Was? Well, no, go, we're going to go back to the version done by Bass Rankin. Bash Which Rankin, you see on the cartoons every day. You know, with Mickey Rooney playing the character Santa. You know, he was. He's a short squatty. He was adopted by the Kringle family, and they were a family of uh, with their family like elf types that were cobblers and, and, and craftsmen. So therefore, he learned to make toys. Oh. So, Seaboard uh, uh, Quid's 1948 novel draws upon the historical legends to tell the story of Santa and the Raising of Christmas. Uh, the story of Santa includes Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the ninth the lead reindeer, immortalized in Gene Autry's song written by Montgomery Ward. Written by Montgomery Ward? Like he's in Montgomery Ward department store? Yeah. Um, you know, like know the brother in. of, of uh, okay, and he, give you a bit of history. Who do you think is Sears and Robux? Oh, the brother of Montgomery, he's Montgomery Ward. It, it See, it. this is a little bit of history. Yeah, so I know. Most, in the people, don't, most people don't realize that they were brothers operating the same sort of company. And Montgomery, does Montgomery Ward still exist? Mm, uh, oh, some yeah. They think they got Montgomery Ward, but they're I haven't seen one in a long time. But I think they've got uh, in some cities they mm -hmm. have Montgomery Wards. Um, chimney tradition: the tradition of Santa Claus entering a dwelling through the chimney may reach back to the tale of Saint Nicholas tossing coins through a window. In Dutch artist uh, Jan Sternich's painting the feast of Saint Nicholas, adults and toddlers are glancing up to the chimney with amazement on their faces while other children play with their toys. The hearth was uh, held scarce to primitive belief as a source of benevolence and popular belief. Elves had been ferried bringing gifts to the house to the portal. Santa's entrance into home on Christmas Eve by the chimney was made part of the American tradition through more as a visit from St. Nicholas where the Arthur describes as an elf. Isn't that something? Uh, so, a lot of this came out of you know, books, see, children's books. We're really nowhere near the end, but we're at the end of the 20th century now. Oh, because by the end of the 20th century, the re the um, the reality of mass mechanical production, yeah. or otherwise mass commercialization, became the more fully accept became more fully accepted by the public, especially in the West. Okay, and it was depicted the modern depiction of Santa's residence not often humorously portrayed as a fully mechanized prediction production and distribution facility equipped with the latest manufacturing technology and overseen by the elves with Santa and Mrs. Claus as executives and our managers. That, doesn't that sound like TV? Yeah, yeah. Go, go look at the television movie. Um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. You know, and you go look at the, you got the, uh, you have the older version of Santa Claus and you have the version with uh, the three versions with Tim Allen, mm -hmm. and then uh, the ultimate version with Polar Express, where they have this massive. They city. do. They have a, ma a huge one. Yeah. In fact, in this article from 2004 from a supply chain manager's trade magazine, um, talks about the depiction. Uh, Santa's main distribution center is a site to behold at four million square feet. It's one of the world's largest facilities. A real-time warehouse management system is, of course, required to run such a complex. The facility becomes, makes extensive use of task interleaving. Can you tell us this from yeah. <laughs> supply yeah. chain? Okay, okay. People really take Santa Claus very seriously. I mean, they treat Santa Claus very seriously and with reverence in a lot of places. Yeah. So. Um, Task interleaving. I'm not even familiar with that. Literally combining dozens of DC activities put away, replenishing or order picking, sleigh loading, cycle counting, in a dynamic queue. The DC elves have been on engineered standards and incentives for three years, leading to a 12% gain in productivity. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like right out of the Santa Claus the movie. Yeah. Um, the WMS, or Warehouse Management System, and Transportation Systems are fully integrated allowing the elves to make optimal decisions that balance transportation, order picking, and other DC costs. <laughs> that a good one. <laughs> um, but known to many, Santa actually has to use many sleighs and fake Santa drivers to get the job done Christmas Eve. 
and the transportation management system optimally builds thousands of consolidated sacks that maximize cube utilization and minimize total air miles. They know. Now, does that it? sound like a <laughs> they, I know. They're, they're trying. Okay. And what it is is some daddy Whoa. trying to explain to his kid. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's the guy that's in supply chain management. Yeah, he is explaining how Santa Claus works, and the kids are going. They're going, huh? Um, what is that? They said, in, yeah, but in 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 the cartoon, all they do is this. He puts it in a great big sack, and all the things get small as they get into it. He puts it in the back of his thing, and he goes, and they go, and he then as they go over the roof, basically. They dump the stuff over there because there's so many just drop them through the roof at some chimney. And I like to see somebody going, but you know, there's way too many houses, so there's got to be some. They call it fix that. Oh God! I mean, I remember. Okay, we can tell it. I can go back. I'm old. I can remember my father, my 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 brother, and I didn't pay that much attention. But the girls naturally, they were very skeptical because they were modern girls. They weren't like us. They were not products of that of World War Two. They were products later so they were skeptical they, they had television and stuff and, and they said well you know like daddy santa claus how could santa claus be on so many corners and how could santa claus you know we know you fly you can you we flew it if i was you you can't go from here to there that fast and then santa and then my father would say uh, santa claus has helpers and they say you mean the real Santa, well, no, the real Santa Claus comes to our house. He just doesn't go to our neighbor's house because he doesn't like our neighbors. Oh, and, and, so the naughty list gets the fake Santa. <laughs> yeah, the naughty get the fake Santa. You know, he, he's the one that, you know, and then they go, oh, I, I understand. I don't like them either. So good for Santa. You know, my father explained it really simply to them. And you figure, I've heard parents for a zillion years explaining, well, Santa has helpers, but the real Santa Claus always comes to our house. So, yeah, always to their house, not to the other guy's house. I mean, he doesn't come to Uncle John's house. Well, Uncle John, well, actually, he, he probably come to Uncle John's house because Uncle John leaves alcohol. He said, yeah, we know Uncle John leaves alcohol. So, yeah. Well, and then they take Santa Claus and they put him, you know, in modern TV shows and give their own interpretations. Yeah, and I, I love this. The TV commercials, comic tricks, and other media depict this as sort of a humorous business with the elf acting sometimes with cheerlessly discredited workforce crafting jokes and pulling pranks on their bosses. Yeah, anybody seen Elf and all those other mm -hmm. movies? Yeah, the elf, they aren't elves, folks. They aren't like the char you know the characters in the Lord of the you know the Rings things or the you know or those things. They're, they're mischievous little beggars. That's why they're elves. So remember, even in uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or Santa Claus is coming to town, they're, they're somewhat mischievous there. So those things are yeah. 50 years old, too, so. That's true, they are. Uh, for instance, a Bloom County story from December 15th through December 24th has Santa rejecting the men's <laughs> professional elf toy making guild for higher wages, a hot tub, a locker room, and, and short broads. <laughs> and short broads. With the elves then going on strike. Well, right. and I love that it's Bloom County, which is animals, right? And yeah. so the place is called Petco, rejecting the demands of Petco, which is professional elves, toy making, and craft organization. Yeah, but Ronald Reagan steps in and fires all Santa's helpers and replaces them with out of work air traffic controllers, <laughs> resulting in a riot before Santa Claus vindictively rehires them to humiliating new positions such as his reindeer keepers. See, which means you, they're pooper You scoopers. can tell this is. Uh, a major. This is this is correct. Yeah, I, I and then know. the Sopranos. <laughs> they said to save us all from Satan's power. <laughs> yeah. Polly says he used to think that Santa and Mrs. Claus were running a sweatshop over there, and the original elves were ugly. Travel with Santa to throw bad kids a beaten and give the good ones toys. <laughs> yeah. That does sound like appropriate for the Sopranos, right? I know. We got. Um we got traditions and rituals. The North American traditions of Ocean of Santa Claus are derived from, God, we ought to be telling you about this from every. We got such rituals of visiting in the farmer store of Santa Claus occur in weeks and days before Christmas letters, such as preferring snacks for Santa, are specific to Christmas Eve. Sun rituals, such as uh, sending out stocking to be filled with gifts, are age old traditions, letters such as Nora attracting Santa's sleigh through the nice guys. Our modern the invention. NORAD would actually need to put that on the front of our website. Well, I, I, I know, I do. I, every year, as it come, I do put it so that people can track Santa. So it's a big deal because, I mean, the United States government spends more money tracking Santa than they. I thought they just made all that up. No, they actually track Santa. They can give you, 
uh, they can tell you where Santa is right then and there. I mean, they'll track Santa around the world. I thought Santa did it all in one night. Yeah, but one night is not one night. One night is two nights, actually, because the time, the time change. Yeah. So it gives you more time to gallop. And since we got, we have transporter. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised. Could be like a transporter, like in Star Trek. I know. They, Star I wonder Trek why Santa? Star Trek never really did a Christmas ish episode. They did oh, do a Christmas episode, but it basically it, it killed. Um, they did kill um, the Joan Collins in it, so that's not a good. That's not a fun Christmas. You don't want a Christmas episode where you kill one of the people. So. Well, and one of the things that people see all over the place now is. You have Santa Claus, and then you have Santa Claus in all the walls, and your kids can go and take pictures with them. Oh, I used to love my aunt. I, mean, I sat there. It was a, it was sort of a good time. My mother and okay, my mother and father worked, you know, during the day. So I ended up on babysitting duty. I take my brothers and sisters over, and we'd get my little sister dressed up sometimes, totally inappropriately. <laughs> pictures taken with Santa. My mother, why did you do that to your sisters? I thought they looked cute. Well, and they're saying this goes back to 1890 when it was credited to James Edgar, um, who started um, in Brockton, Massachusetts. And oh, it was his Brockton, Massachusetts department store. Yeah. Not really to get business, I'm sure. Yeah, I know. It, it, it basically, um, uh, you know, it, it also um, it was a good way. Because I can remember, we would go, um, you know, we would go into like the Macy's. Most people don't remember Gimbal, but if you watch America on 34th Street. It's Gimbal's. on the TV show. Yeah, we would, my parents would hand the, I, because I, 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 uh, I'll just put it this way, because my mother and father worked, I ended up making certain that everything was done because my mother and father couldn't take us everywhere. My mother, my mother was an early restaurant manager. My father was a reserve officer, and my and and worked on home. So you couldn't always be around. So I didn't. I mean, I was always told here, tell Santa Claus, you know, you give him, you give him the list. And Santa, oh, I understand that you've been a good little girl today. My list says that you've asked for. Mm -hmm. And the girls would go. Oh. How did you know, Santa? And then my brother, he. <laughs>